Chavata Chalam. Chavata Chalam. And we are finally we get to go into which day did he actually die? Right. And we give praise to Ahaya, Ashri Ahaya, and our Dono Yache, and our mother who are Kakwadoshi. We hope you all have been enjoying this time and looking forward to this information. So, four things must happen. Within one week, which is seven days, he must confirm the covenant within this one week and be cut off for us. Right. In the midst of the week, the fourth day, he must die to cause the sacrifice and oblations to cease. Mm -hmm. He has to Good. die before the Shabbat, which is the Passover day. He has to be dead three days within that week to fulfill the week as prophesied. So we have these things that must happen. Notice also the spring season starts with equal parts day and night, which is nine parts day, nine parts night. To help understand the daytime hours during that spring season, we must look at the times according to scripture. Let's look at what transpires in the 12th month before the spring season starts. In Enoch chapter 72, verse 31 and 32, it reads, And on that day the sun rises from that portal and sets in the west and returns to the east and rises in the third portal for one and thirty mornings and sets in the west of the heaven. Verse 32, On that day the night decreases and amounts to nine parts and the daytime to nine parts and the night is equal to the day and the year is exactly as to his day, 364. That is what transpires on the new moon of spring, the last day of the year. After the completion of the year on the new moon, the first month of the new year begins on the next day and lasts for 30 days wherein the daytime grows longer daily from 9 parts unto 10 parts by the 30th day of the first month. We can understand this through Enoch chapter 72 verse 6 and verse 8 to 10 where it reads, in this way he rises in the first month in the great portal, which is the fourth. Verse 8. When the sun rises in the heaven, he comes forth through that fourth portal, thirty mornings in succession, and sets accurately in the fourth portal in the west of the heaven. And during this period, the day becomes daily longer and the night lightly shorter to the thirtieth morning. On that day, the day is longer than the night by a ninth part, and the day amounts to exactly ten parts and the night to eight parts. So this helps us understand that in the spring season, that ninth hour when Christ was on the cross, it was still daytime. So the ninth hour was not in the night when he died. It was still day hours. So we can know that according to the records. It is also confirmed that he could not have died on the Shabbat because Isaiah the prophet saw that he would die before the Shabbat. Right. We can see the truth of the matter in the gospel by precepts. All right, without further ado, let's get into the story. So, Yacha was familiar with the customs of the feast and did not deter anyone from the animal sacrifice law before his death. Let's look at Luke chapter 2, verse 41 and 43. Luke chapter 2, verse 41. Now his parents went to Yerushalayim every year at the Feast of Pesach, And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Yerushalayim after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Yacheh tarried behind in Yerushalayim. And Yasafo and his mother knew not of it. All right. You see that Yacheh knew of the Feast of Passover. He knew right. he had to go to the temple. This right. was the law. He would not have the law because he did not sin. Now, let's look at Matthew 8 and 4. And Yahshua saith unto him, See thou, tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priests, and offer the gift that Mushi commanded for a testimony unto them. Yahshua did not tell anybody not to do the animal sacrifices when right. he was on the earth, because right. they were righteous. That's right. So we know if there's a time when sacrifices are supposed to be offered and those things, Yahshua would have done them. He would have kept the feast at the temple if it truly had been Shabbat day of Passover, as he did in his youth on earth. Right. Yache did no sin, knew no sin, and was without sin, according to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, and 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. So he could not have broken any of the laws. Right. With this background, we need to identify the laws which will help us to understand the events of the gospel. Okay, we have one. The preparation is the 10th to 14th, the time they got the lamb. That's Exodus chapter 12, verse 3 to 6. 
Then you have the Passover sacrifice had to be done at the temple. It was not lawful to do it at home. It must be done at the temple. As Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 5 to 7, and Jubilees chapter 49, verse 19 to 21 tells. Right. And that law got changed from Exodus. Right. After Exodus, it got changed. Right. So, and we went over that. That's true. Right. The law required all males of 20 years upward to appear before the temple for the feast, as Deuteronomy 16 and 16 said, and Jubilees 49 and 17. So, Yach and his disciples, they were of age. Right. They would have had to go into the temple. Right. And another law, Yach kept all the feasts because it was the law right. and went up to the required feast by evidence of a prior feast that required men to come up. In John chapter 7, verse 2, in verse 8 and verse 10, that was the uh, Feast of Tabernacles that Yache went to. He went secretly. Because mm -hmm. right. it was an appointed feast. There was three feasts in the year. Unleavened bread, tabernacles, and first fruits. All the men had to appear. Right. right. With this understanding, it lets you know that it couldn't have been Passover day when Yache sat with his disciples. If it was Passover day, they would have to have been at the temple. Right. The law required them to stay at the temple all night until the morning. Right. As Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 7 said, and even when they were in Exodus before, they had to stay in their houses until the morning, as Exodus chapter 12 verse 22 said. So that lets you know also that it couldn't have been the Passover night when he was with his disciples because they went outside. Right. So let's start looking at the events. Before coming to Bethany on the first day of the week, which was six days before Shabbat, because the Shabbat is the seventh day, six days before that is the first day of the week. Right. Okay, that's the eighth day of the first month. On that day, the first day of the week, he healed two blind men. Now let's start looking at that. Matthew chapter 20, verse 17 to 19, and verse 29 to 30. Matthew chapter 20, verse 17. And Yahweh going up to Yerachalim took the twelve disciples apart in the way and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Yerachalim, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priest and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scorch and to crucify him. And in the third day he shall rise again. So he tells them what's going to come. And this is on their way to Jerusalem. Continue, please. And as they departed from Jericho, great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Yahshe passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Adonai, thou son of Dewede. That shows even the blind men knew he was the right. son of Dewede. They, they, they ain't got no eyes, but they can see. <laughs> going to follow this story by precept to find and put it in its order. Let's jump to Mark chapter 10 verse 48 to 52. This is the part about the blind men. All right, continue. Mark chapter 10 verse 48. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal, thou son of the way they have mercy on me. And Yahshe stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind men saying unto him, be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Yahshe. And Yahshe answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Adono, that I might receive my sight. And Yahshe said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Yahshe in the way. So there we see how we've seen that story is flowing coming to Jerusalem, leaving from Jericho, he heals the two blind men. Continuing Mark chapter 11, verse 1. And when they came nigh to Yerushalayim unto Bethpage in Bethany. So we saw he came from Jericho to Bethpage in Bethany. Uh -huh. At the Mount of Olives, he sent us forth two of his disciples. We can see from Jericho to Bethany and Bethpage near Jerusalem, we can confirm that this was on the first day of the week. Let's jump to Mark chapter 11, verse 11, after the events had passed and see what it says they could be looking for these timestamps to see what transpired. Right. And Yahshe entered into Yerushalayim and into the temple. And when he had looked around about upon all things, and now the eventide was come. So it's getting ready for the day to end. Right. Eventide was come. Continue. He went out unto Bethany with the twelve. He was at Bethany and Bethpage. 
Then he went on over to Jerusalem, looked round about, and then when eventide was coming, he went back to Bethany. Okay, he went to Simon the leper's house. Let's look, John chapter 12, verse 1. Then Yahche, six days before the Pesachah, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. Now we see all these things that had happened that we just read about was on the first day. Because right. it was six days before Pesachah. That's right. Now, let's jump to Matthew chapter 26, verse 6, to see that they were at Simon the leper's house. Right. There was the 12 disciples there. Lazarus was there, and we're going to see, according to Matthew chapter 26, that he was at Simon the leper's house. Now, when Yahweh was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, he was there with the twelve, as Mark 11 and 11 said, and Lazarus is there, as John 12 and 1 said. This was six days before Passover, which is the first day of the week. And let's read John chapter 12, verse 2 and 3. John chapter 12, verse 2. There they made him a supper. And Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. So he had the twelve and Lazarus sitting, Martha serving, continued. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Yache, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. And Mary anointed him that day. On the first day of the week, he was anointed. Right. That's wonderful. We're jumping around so we can see how... It lines up once Elijah puts the scriptures in line so we can see. Right. right? Matthew 26, verse 7. There came unto him a woman having an alabaster box. Now we know that's Mary. Right. <laughs> Continue. A very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. And we, he sat at meat because he was at supper with Lazarus at the table right. with him and with Martha serving. And now we know it's the first day. So we can follow the rest of the timestamps now. We're still in Matthew chapter 26. Can you read chapter 26, verse 1 to 7, please? Yeah, Matthew chapter 26, verse 1. And it came to pass, when Yahweh had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the feast of Pesach, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Now, this was said six days before the Shabbat. Right. It's on the first day of the week. So the two days after that is the third day, the tenth day of the first month, when you're supposed to get the Passover. So when he said, you know that after two days of the Feast of Passover, we talk about the day that you're supposed to get the lamb. Right. At that time, they considered Passover as from the tenth day when you have to get that lamb, because right. the lamb is the actual Passover, unto the fourteenth when you had to kill the lamb at the boarding of the evening. Right. So you understand, right? So you understand from the Hebrew perspective what's being spoken of here. Verse three. Then assembled together the chief priests and, and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas. You notice this is all happening on the first day of the week. Right. Continue. And consulted that they might take Yahche by subtlety and kill him, but they said, not on the feast day. At least there'd be an uproar among the people. So they, Yahshua was talking about getting the actual lamb. He said the Passover, but them, they're talking about the actual feast when you actually have to kill it. Right. Hence, their goal, we have to kill him before that time comes. They decided they have to kill him before Shabbat, right. which would tie right into what Isaiah said, that he would die before the Shabbat. Right. So we're still on the first day of the week. Let's continue and affirm that these Pharisees had said this on that same first day of the week. Mark chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. Mark chapter 14, verse 1. After two days was the feast of Pesachah and of unleavened bread. And you see how they put it all into one. Because you get the Pesachah, that's the preparation and leading you up to unleavened bread. Because once you kill the Pesachah, you go into that night eating it with the unleavened bread. And then once the sun is down, we're in the feast of unleavened, unleavened bread for seven days. Right. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. So we see scripturally is no way he could have died on the feast day. And he could not have kept the feast day according to the law. Because what they had did, as we're going to see, were the things that were unlawful to do on the feast day. Right. 
All right, let's continue with verse 3. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper. This confers that it was the first day. <laughs> it's the same first day of the week. <laughs> now, let's jump back to Matthew chapter 26, verse 6 and 7. Matthew 26 and 6. Now, when Yahweh said within Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box, a very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he said at meat. You know, that was Mary, first of the week in Bethany. Judas got offended this very night right. over this ointment because he was a lover of money and right. made a deal with the Pharisees. Seeing as though they had just decided to get Yache killed, we'll also understand why they were so excited Judas came to them. So the same day... Yahweh confirmed the covenant, tell them what has to come to pass. The Pharisees decide they won't kill him that day, and here comes Judas, the knight, going into the second day of the week now to make a deal with them, and right. they're so excited about it. And put their plan together. Right. And let's look at John chapter 12, verse 4 to 6. John chapter 12, verse 4. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Issachar, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor. This he said not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. All right. Let's jump to Mark chapter 14, verse 6. Mark 14 and 6. And Yahweh said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, Ye may do them good, but me ye have not always. She have done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she have done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. It is so. Right. It is so. Continue verse 10. And Judas is cart. One of the twelve went unto the chief priest to betray him unto them. All right, let's jump to Matthew chapter 26, verse 14 to 16. Matthew 26 and 14. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priest and said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time, he saw opportunity to betray him. The first day of the week, after they ate supper, goes into the nighttime, right? Right. Now that's the second day of the week. Right. He met, went and made a deal with the Pharisees. From that time, he's trying to find out how he can get him killed. Now we're in the ninth day of the month when Judas got offended that night and made a deal with the Pharisees. Now we'll look and see what happened from that night in the morning of the second day. Let's look at Mark chapter 11, verse 12. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. So this is in the morning, right? It was the next day. You had the fig tree event. Let's jump to Mark chapter 11, verse 19. And when even was come, he went out of the city. This is evening leading into the 10th day of the month, the time of the preparation. Right. So we're going into the ending of another day. Let's jump to Mark chapter 11, verse 20. Now we're getting to the 10th day of the month. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. This is the morning of the 10th day. Right. This is the start of the preparation time. Because you have to get that line by the 10th day, according to Exodus 12, 3 to 6. Matthew chapter 26, verse 17 to 18. Matthew chapter 26, verse 17. Now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Yahweh, saying unto him, Where well, would thou that we prepare for thee to eat this Pesachah? Now, this is interesting. How could this really be the first day of unleavened bread when the Passover wasn't even prepared? Right. You can't have unleavened bread when you don't even have the Passover prepared <laughs> unless you know it wasn't the actual day of unleavened bread. You know this wasn't the actual day of unleavened bread because the Passover is killed before the first day of unleavened bread even comes in according to the law. As we have discussed in Jubilees 49, 10 to 12, right. the fact that they asked about preparing the Passover lets us know that it was actually the day of preparation, which is the 10th day of the month, 
That's what I say. Well, what is now that we prepare the Passover? That wasn't something they were worried about asking before. Right. But now the days come. Like, hey, where you want to prepare the Passover? <laughs> we know what time's coming up. Remember the law. All males have to go to the temple for the feast. So it couldn't have been the feast day. Now, let's read Matthew chapter 26, verse 18. And he said, Go into the city to such a man and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. He knows his time is at hand because now is the day you have to get the lamb. <laughs> he knows they're going to come get him. I will keep the Pasaka at thy house with my disciples. And we know because the Pasaka he's talking about is the bread and the wine. All right. The they communion. had to come get him. It's interesting. The dichotomy. They had to come get him because he was the Pasaka lamb. So they fulfilled the law. Not understanding that they fulfilled the law by getting the lamb. By the time they got him, it was going into the 11th, 11th day, day. But it's within the time of preparation. preparation. Hence, the law is being kept. Right. He knew he was the Passover to be collected as the prophecy said he would be. Hence, he said, my time is at hand. The first day in Matthew 26, 17 was not the first day of the feast. It was a four, which means it was the time before the feast. Also, as it has been revealed, the Feast of Passover was considered from the 10th day for the people at that time, because Passover pertains to the Lamb. As you keep reading, the truth will manifest what day it really was, whether the 10th or the 14th. Let's read Mark chapter 14, verse 12 to 15. Mark chapter 14, verse 12. And the first day of unleavened bread. That's that same word that, that was in Matthew chapter 26, verse 17. It's the same Greek word for first. Continue. When they killed the Pesach, his disciples said unto him, Where would thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Pesach? Just looking at it from what it says and knowing the law. They said, Where will is thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Pesach? Now, looking at just the law. Pesachah is on Shabbat day. Right. If it actually was the first day of unleavened bread, the first day of unleavened bread is on the eighth day, the first day of the week. It's after Shabbat. Right. So it couldn't have been the first day of unleavened bread, and then they're asking him, where do you want us to go prepare Pesachah? Right. That would have made it, you already missed Pesachah. It was right. supposed to be on Shabbat. But now knowing the truth that that's not what they were saying, the word first means a four. So it was before the Feast of Unleavened Bread when the Passover was killed. Because for the Feast of Unleavened Bread, you have to kill a Pusaka on Shabbat before Unleavened Bread comes in. So they're asking, before Unleavened Bread, hey, when do, where do you want us to go prepare this Pusaka for you to eat it? It's confirming again that it was the 10th day. Right? Let's continue in verse 13 of Mark chapter 14. And he sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. And wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house. The master saith, Where is the guest chamber, where I shall eat the basaka with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared. There make ready for us. Yache told him to go make ready. He told him to do work. It couldn't have been the Pesachah day because <laughs> we supposed to rest. Right. Continue Mark chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. Mark chapter 14, verse 16. And his disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Pesachah. So they did all the preparations as pertained to the law right. because he wouldn't have had them sin. He's full of all righteousness. And when he told them to tell the man, that he wants to eat the Passover with his disciples, we know he's talking about the communion, right. his body and his blood. Let's continue. We're in verse 17 now. And in the evening he cometh with the twelve. So it's evening time. Now we're getting to the close of the day. We're heading towards the fourth day of the week. Right. Now we're getting to the next day. This is the middle of the week now. This is when it's all supposed to go down in the midst of the week. As right. Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 said... Let's read Luke chapter 22, verse 14. So now we're literally going into the 11th day of the Hebrew calendar. We're going into it. All right, thank you. So, Luke 22 and 14. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. And now it's amazing. He said, when the hour was come, what is that hour? Now when the even was come, he sat down with the 12. There we go. Fourth day. All right, we're in the fourth day. <laughs> now, let's look at John 
chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Now, this is wonderful because we kept saying that the word first meant before, right? right. <laughs> now, let's read John chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Now, before the feast of Pesachah, when Yahshua knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. That now it makes it right. better to understand when he said in Luke chapter 22, verse 14, when the hour was come. Right. When he knew his hour was come, he knew it was the time. Right. Continue that verse, John 13. And that 14. he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Right. So we see, it confirmed that it was before Passover. Right. So now you understand when Matthew 26 and 17 said the first day of unleavened bread, and when Mark chapter 14, verse 12 said the first day of unleavened bread, it wasn't actually the first day. The word there was afore or before in right. the Greek. And John chapter 13 confirms it to know that it was before Passover. Right. It was not actual Passover day when he sat with his disciples. That's it right. was the day of preparation that they went to prepare. Now, let's look at Luke chapter 22, verse 15. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this pasaka with you before I suffer. And now he's telling them of spiritual things because he's not talking about the actual lamb. Right. <laughs> he's talking about the true lamb of Allah, his body and his blood. That's right. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of Allah. Right. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of Elohim shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So that was Luke chapter 22, verse 15 to 19. They just had the real Passover. Right. While the, the carnal Passover was being prepared to be sacrificed. Right. Matthew chapter 26, verse 27 to 29. Matthew 26 and 27. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And we understand that testament now. Right. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drank it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. After he gave them communion, then Judas went out to go betray him because Judas had found the opportunity this night. On the night, the fourth day of the week, which is the 11th day of the first month. Let's read John chapter 13, verse two. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Now, that word supper there, 1 Corinthians 11 and 20 lets us know what that supper was. Right. Can you read 1 Corinthians 11 and 20, please? When ye come together, therefore, into one place, it is not to eat a donie supper. So there we see by his priest that we understand that supper in John 13 and 2 was the communion. Because right. in the book of John, it doesn't really talk about the communion. But now we know by priest that that supper was the actual communion that they had. Now let's continue John chapter 13, verse 3 to 30. All right, John 13 and 3. Yahweh, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from Elohim and went to Elohim, he rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter. And Peter saith unto him, But don't know, doest thou wash my feet? Yahweh answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Yahweh answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, I don't know, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. <laughs> now, it's, it's a testimony for us to understand how to avoid pride as well. Because right. it's also pride to not want anybody else to do anything for us. Right. So you can see how Yacha was helping Peter. He was guiding Peter to understand how to lead the church. Because that's what he said, what I do now, you don't understand, but you're going to understand after. He was teaching Peter how to serve. 
how to walk in humility right? and be an example to the church. And then you can see these are Israelites. He said, not my feet only, do <laughs> my hand, my hand, my hand, to get everything. <laughs> Continue. Y'all just say up to him, he that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments, he was set down again. And he said unto them, know ye what I have done to you? Now this is a testimony as well, because he washed all their feet, even his enemy. Right. He said, love your enemies. It's a testimony for us to know how to actually walk in his ways. Continue. You call me master and Adonai. And you say, well, if I am so. If I then, your Adonai and master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is no greater than his Adonai, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. And it is a rejoicing when right. you truly understand what is being done for and who is doing it in us. Right. All right? I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Mm -hmm. Now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Right. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. When Yahweh had thus said, he was troubled in spirit, and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And when the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake, now there was leaning on Yahweh's bosom one of his disciples whom Yahweh loved. That's John. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask <laughs> who it should be. <laughs> You can see John's on his bosom. He's like, go ask it. He's like, ask it. Go ask it. You know, he's sitting on his bosom like. <laughs> oh, man. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. Then, he then lying on Yahweh's breast saith unto him, I don't know. Who is it? So you can see John all, he's being cool. all, right, yeah, trying to be cool. all cool about it. <laughs> Brotherly love, man. Brotherly love. <laughs> Continue. Yaja answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Mm -hmm. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Yaja unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. Notice, he told John who it was. Right. John didn't get to tell everybody else. Right. Hence, what we're about to see is right. everybody else didn't realize Judas was actually the one he was talking about. Right. Continue. Now, no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. See, everybody heard him say that what you do is do quickly. Right. So they're sitting there thinking we're preparing for the feast. You know, right. if we got Passover coming up. Right. Hence, let's look at what's about to be said here in verse 28. And that also shows that it wasn't Passover because Judas ran out to go get some stuff. Right, because it's against the law right. to leave that night. That's why we went over the laws to right. put the story in context. So verse 28 said, Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. In verse 29. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag that Yahweh had said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of. Against the feast. Against the feast. Right. That makes you know that's for the feast, when the feast comes. Right. So that shows it wasn't Passover day because they're thinking, yeah, they told him, yeah, go get the other stuff that we need for the feast. That lets you know it couldn't have been Shabbat. Right. It also lets you know it was not the first day of the week because the Passover feast had not come yet. They thought he was telling him to get things to prepare for the feast. Right. Now, continuing... Verse 29. Or that he should give something to the poor. This is a regular day of the week. It's not the actual Shabbat, the day of the feast. Right. 
they're thinking he's either going to get some for the feast or going to go do some alms. Right. One of the normal things that's done. Verse 30, please. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. And so this is the night. This is in the nighttime of the fourth day of the week. We're still in the midst of the week. You can substantiate it was not the actual feast day because the law requires them to stay at the temple. And they're not even at the temple. And we know from Yachay's childhood, his parents took him to the temple. He would have went to the temple according to the law. Right. Else it would have made him a transgressor. For him to even send Judas outside would have been a transgression of the law if it was actually the Shabbat and the feast of Passover right. and unleavened bread. No one questioned Judas going outside either because it wasn't the feast day. Right. Now we're continuing the story. Judas left, and they sung a song and went outside as well, further showing it was not the feast day. Right. Let's look at Mark chapter 14, verse 26 to 30, please. Mark chapter 14, verse 26. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. So this is nighttime. They're out in the Mount of Olives late in the night. And let you know it's not Pusaka day, because Deuteronomy 16 Verse 6 and 7 said, you can't leave the temple until morning. But they didn't have to go to the temple because this was not the Shabbat day. This was not the feast of Pusaka, nor was it the feast of unleavened bread. Mark chapter 14, verse 26 to 30. We're on the fourth day of the week, right? Okay, I'm on verse 27. You on verse 27? Okay. And Yahweh say saith unto them, all you shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. Right. So he's saying all of them are going to run off. Right. That was a, what a session of Isaiah testified said, as right. well, showing that Ahayat spoke of it from before. Right. Because he tells it to his prophets, right. and it came to pass. And there we are reading about how it happened. Right. Continue. But after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. Right. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. And Yahweh saith unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even in this night, night. Yes. before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. It's still the fourth day of the week. Right. It's still the fourth day of the week. He hasn't finished. Let's continue. In this same night, Judas came to betray him. This is Mark chapter 14, verse 42. Rise up. Let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. Now jump to Mark to the 14, verse 53 and 54. Mark chapter 14, verse 53. And they led Yahweh away to the high priest, and with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes. And Peter followed him afar off, even into the palace of the high priest. And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. Now let's get more understanding of what happened in this story. John chapter 18, verse 12 to 14, and then verse 24. John 18 and 12. Mm -hmm. Then the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Yahweh and bound him, and led him away to Annas first, for he was father-in-law to Caiaphas. So there we see when Judas and them came and got him, they took him to Annas first. Continue. Which was the high priest that same year. Mm -hmm. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Now Annas had sent, sent him bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest. So he went from Annas to Caiaphas. That was verse 24. All right. Now Mark chapter 14, verse 72. And the second time the cock crew, and Peter called to mind the word that Yahweh said unto him, before the cock crowed twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereon, he wept. Now, that was at Caiaphas. Now, it's interesting. When the cock crows, what does that let you know? It's morning time. <laughs> it's still the fourth day of the week. It's the eleventh day of the month. In the morning came, the Israelites took Yahweh to Pilate. Mark chapter 15, verse 1. And straightway in the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council, and bound Yahshua and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. All right. Let's see what happened in the morning after the cock crew. Now, John chapter 18, verse 28. John chapter 18. <laughs> the little ones are enjoying it. Huh? <laughs> John 18 and 28. Then led they Yahshua from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, 
but that they might eat the Pesach. We see that they said, and it was early. This helps tie in Mark 15 and 1, so we can understand that these are speaking of the same time frames. They said it was early because it was morning. The cock just crowed after it came morning. They took him over to Pilate. And notice, this is great confirmation to know that it was not Passover. Right. Because it said, they themselves went not into the judgment hall lest they should be defiled. Right. But that they might eat the Passover. That lets you know, Yache did the true spiritual Passover, which is the bread and the wine, his body and his blood, with the disciples. Right. It was not literally killing a lamb, a literal animal sacrifice that was done with Yacha and his disciples because the actual feast of Passover, according to the commandment, that would be on the 14th day, which is the Shabbat day, the end of the week, did not come yet. Even the Pharisees were trying to keep themselves clean so that they could keep Passover when it came because they have made the plan from the first day of the week that they needed to kill him before the feast. Right. Now, let's jump to Luke to continue getting more of the story. We're going to read Luke 23, verse 6 to 7, then verse 11, and then verse 15 and 16, please. Luke 23 and 6. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Yodachalim at that time. In verse 11, And Herod with this man of war set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. So we see he went from Annas to Caiaphas. Caiaphas then took him to Pilate. Pilate found out he was from Galilee. Pilate sent him to Herod. Herod sent him back to Pilate. Now, let's continue reading. Number 15. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death had done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. Let's jump to that. John chapter 19, verse 1 to 6, please. John chapter 19, verse 1. Then Pilate therefore took Yache and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a, a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Yahshua forth, wearing a crown of thorns and a purple robe. And Pilate saith unto him, Behold the man. When the chief priest therefore and the officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. Let's jump to John chapter 19, verse 13 to 16. Please. John chapter 19, verse 13. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Yahshua forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement by the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Pesachah. Still is preparation time. Because right. <laughs> you have for the 10th to the 14th to get it. It's the 11th day of the month. <laughs> Continue. And about the sixth hour, and he said unto the Jews, Behold, your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Mm -hmm. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Yahshua and led him away. It mentioned the sixth hour. So we have a time stamp. We're in the fourth day of the week, which is the eleventh day of the, the Hebrew calendar the Hebrew calendar in the first month right. and is the sixth hour. Right. Remember that during the spring, spring starts with equal parts day and equal parts night. That's nine parts day and nine parts night. The book of Jubilees, chapter 49, it talks about how the Passover has to be killed in that third part of the day. It's not Passover day that Yahshua is getting killed, but he's going to be killed in the time frame that a Passover would be killed on the Shabbat day. Let's jump to Matthew chapter 27, verse 45 to 49. All right, Matthew 27 and 45. 
Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. Matthew chapter 27 verse 45 says, Ninth hour, that means it is still daytime. Before evening, because there are at least nine hours day in the beginning of the first month, and it only increases as the month gets closer to its end. Now we can understand that he did die on the fourth day before sunset. Matthew chapter 27 verse 46, please. And about the ninth hour, Yahweh cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, my Allah, my Allah, why hast thou forsaken me? In some of it, he is shown like Alayah, Alayah, that's the name for Elijah. Hence, they thought he was actually saying Elijah, Elijah. at that time. Let's continue verse 47, please. Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, this man called us for Elijah. Because <laughs> he said, Alayah, Alayah. <laughs> And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let be, let us see whether Elijah will come and save him. All right, let's jump to John chapter 19, verse 30. When Yahweh therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the spirit. All right, so Yahweh, he's dead. And we're going to see that this is before the sun went down. Matthew chapter 27, verse 50. Yahshua, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the spirit. Mm -hmm. Continue, please, verse 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. In the fourth day of the week, right. caused the sacrifice and, and oblations to cease, fulfilling at that time Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. As it was prophesied, so did he do. All right. Now, jump to verse 54 of Matthew chapter 27. Now, when the centurion and they that were with him, watching Yahshua, saw the earthquake, and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the son of Elohim. Let's jump to John chapter 19, verse 31 to 37, please. John 19, 31. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation, that the body should not remain upon a cross on the Shabbat day. So they were still, this preparation time, they want to get the bodies down before the feast come. Right. Okay. Basalt, for the Shabbat day was a high day. Yeah, we're still on the fourth day of the week, right. the eleventh day of the month. They're trying to get everybody down because they got to go get ready for Pesachah because that Shabbat, when that Shabbat come on the fourteenth day of that first month, it's a high day. It's Posaka day. Continue. Besought Pilate that their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Yache and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record. And his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. Because you can't break any of the bones that are passed over lamb. Right. And again, another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they pierced. Now, we we'll continue the story and see Matthew chapter 27, verse 55 to 59, please. Matthew 27 and 55. And many women were there beholding afar off, which followed Yahshua from Galilee, ministering unto him, among which was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph. So that's Yahshua's mother and his other two brothers. And the mother of Zebedee's children. All right. Now we see that he is dead, but the day is not over. So the time has already started to fulfill the three days and three nights. Right. Let's continue reading verse 57. When the even was come. So now we're finally getting right. to the sun is about to set to right. go into the 12th day of the month, which is the fifth day of the week. Right. That week, remember we started off, we have to find the seven days that week. He had told him about the covenant on the first day of the week, six right. days before Passover. We've seen that he's died on the fourth day of the week right. and rent the temple in two, showing that he caused the sacrifices and oblations to cease in the midst of the week, right. just as was prophesied. 
now we're in the three days three nights time frame and we're seeing we're heading into the fifth day of the week and the sun is going down now from right here we can simply count he's dead already right that we have to find three days and three nights from the time that he died for the prophecy to be fulfilled because that was the sign right before the sundown because it said even was come you see that even comes after he was already gone right, right? so at that sixth and ninth hour which he died at the ninth hour before the sun set. From that ninth hour, three days, three nights. You go from the ninth hour on the fourth day, that takes you to the ninth hour on the fifth day. That's one day, one night. Ninth hour from the fifth day to the sixth day, that's two days, two nights. Ninth hour from the sixth day to the seventh day, which is the Passover hour, Yache rises. Right, three days. Let's continue reading the story, though. Verse 57. All right. When the even was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Yasapho, who also himself was Yahshua's disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Yahshua. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Yasapho had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulchre and departed. All right. John chapter 19, verse 41 or 42. John 19 and 41. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden was a new sepulchre. So now we know from the prior verse that sepulchre belonged to Joseph of Arimathea. Continue. Wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Yache, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day. For the sepulchre was nigh at hand. Then you know, still, it was not the Shabbat day, because right. it's still the Jews' preparation day. Jump back to Matthew 27, verse 61. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulchre. So they're sitting right there, seeing everything that's being done, so they can know where he's being put. Right. Jump to Luke chapter 23, verse 54 to 56. Luke 23 and 54. And that day was the preparation. And the Shabbat drew on. Drew on. I mean, the Shabbat was coming. <laughs> it was still going toward the Shabbat because time doesn't stop. Right. So we're going into the fifth day of the week, which would be the 12th day of the first month. Read Luke chapter 24, verse 55 and 56, please. And the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments. They're preparing things. They're working. That lets you know it wasn't Shabbat day. Continue. And rested the Shabbat day according to the commandment. That lets you know that day that they went and prepared them spices, that was not Shabbat right. day. That was before you, Shabbat. Right. Now they did rest on Shabbat day. When it came, because right. that's what you're supposed to do. Right. It is impossible for him to have died on the Shabbat day or the day before the Shabbat day and still rise the first day of the week. Right. That couldn't happen because if he died Shabbat, he would have to have been in there three days. And that would take you Shabbat, first day, second day. That would have made the prophecy none of void. Right. And if he would have died on the sixth day of the week, that would have been Shabbat, then the first day of the week, then the second day of the week, it still would have made the prophecy null and void. Right. So you can see how none of these things could actually be true. They would have confounded the actual prophecies. Mm -hmm. So, going forward, Matthew chapter 27, verse 62 to 65. Matthew 27, verse 62. Now, the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure unto the third day. Least his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He had risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to cover their tracks. Right. They did not want the people to know. So we see that Yache died on the eleventh day of the month, which is the fourth day of the week, before the sunset, about the ninth hour. The Pharisees came the morning of the fifth day of the week on the twelfth day of the first month to set a guard on the tomb for three days. But they thought Christ would rise after three days, which would have been Sunday, the first day of the week. But they were wrong. Remember, Christ said himself that he should be raised the third day, which would fall on the Sabbath. 
because that was actually the third day from the day that he died. Let's look at Matthew chapter 17, verse 23. And it reads, And they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceeding sorry. As we see in scripture, Christ said himself that he shall be raised the third day. It is also confirmed in Luke chapter 18, verse 33. It reads, And they shall scourge him and put him to death, and the third day he shall rise again. Notice, this helps us understand that he was raised on the third day, which was the Sabbath. Hence, he was not there on the first day of the week. We can also confirm that he would have risen in three days, not after three days, by reading John 2 and 19, where he says, Yache answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Hence, he wasn't in the tomb when they came the first day of the week, after the third day. When we look at Matthew chapter 28, verse 1, where it reads, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to the sea, the sepulchre. We see now, knowing the other priests, that once they said in the end of the Sabbath, that lets us know he was already risen, because he said he would have been risen within three days. So we can understand why he wasn't there when they came to see him. And also we can understand what the angels said better now as well. In Matthew 28, verse 5 and 6. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Yache, which was crucified. Verse 6. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. He had said he would be risen the third day. Hence, he wasn't there, as he had said unto the people. Now, he's already rose on Shabbat, at about the ninth hour. Now, we're going into the 15th day, which is the first day of unleavened bread in the morning, to see what transpired in the story. Let's look at Luke chapter 24, verse 1 to 12. Luke chapter 24, verse 1. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. Oh, this is interesting. Why did they have to wait until the morning? Right. Because it was the actual law that they could not leave that night until the morning. As Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 6 to 7 told, and even Exodus chapter 12, verse 22. And talked about how you can't go out of your tents until in the morning. Right. So you can see why they actually had to wait till in the morning to come to the support. So showing that they were still keeping the commandments. Let's continue reading. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found out the body of Adonai Yache. As he was already gone before the Shabbat had ended. Right. And it came to pass that they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And from Ascension of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 13 to 16, it lets us know that those two men, that was Gabriel and Michael. And Michael. Continue. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again? And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, and the other woman that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran into the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen cloth laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. Now notice that Peter ran, beheld the sepulchre, and departed, wondering what was come to pass. Now, we have to go to another record to get the rest of this story because there's more. It wasn't just Peter that ran up. Let's go to John chapter 20, verse 2 to 10. John Please. chapter 20, verse 2. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter. That's where the women ran to the apostles, as it said in the book of Luke. Continue. And to the other apostles, whom Yahweh loved, and saith unto them, 
They have taken away Adono out of the sepulchre. And that apostle whom Yahweh loved was John. So it's John and Peter. Continue. They have taken away the Adono out of the sepulchre. And we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and the other disciple and came to the sepulchre. So they both ran to, so they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter. So John was faster. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> and came first to the sepulcher. And he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloth lying, yet went he not in. So John got there first and saw it, but he was he didn't go in there, right? But then here comes Peter. Then comes Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and see if the linen cloth lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. And so the clothes neatly folded in there. Right. Continue. Then went in also the other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. Continue. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. So you can see that the apostles didn't understand everything no. from the get-go. It had to get revealed over time. Right. All right, verse 10. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. So John and Peter left. Now let's look at Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to 18 to see what happened. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Yorotalum about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Yahshua himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another, as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered and said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in your child? And hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And they drew nigh unto the village. Because they had a whole dialogue with them. And they drew nigh to the village, whither they went. I'm sorry. <laughs> whether they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. So Yajay kind of walked like he wasn't going to go with them to their house. He started going the other way. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening. And the day is far spent. It's getting close to the end of this day. Come with us. This is the first day of unleavened bread. The 15th day of the first month. The first day of the week. Continue. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. Now that's amazing because it's unleavened bread. Right. They're still eating bread right. as the feast called for. Right. But he didn't drink wine because he told them he's not going to drink it until he's drinking with them in the kingdom. Right. So you can see that it was literally unleavened bread right. that he sat. He even blessed it. Now, verse 31. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him. And he <laughs> vanished out of their sight. <laughs> and they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us? While he talked with us, by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Continue. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Yorochalim and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Adonai had risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. And as they thus spake, Yahshua himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Mm -hmm. But they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for the spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. Now, let's look at more about that time. In John chapter 20, verse 19 to 29. Then the same day at even. That same day, because remember, they ran right. and went to those guys, right? Continue. Being the first day of the week. And that's letting us know again. It's the 15th. The sun ain't, hasn't gone down yet to go into the 16th because it's at even. Continue. When the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews came Yahshua 
and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Same thing he said to them in the book of Luke. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw Adonai. Then said Yahweh to them again, Peace be unto you. As my father hath sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Yahweh came. The other disciple therefore said unto him, We have seen Adonai. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the prints of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, this is interesting, because Yache came back after the feast was over. Because the Feast of Unleavened Bread is seven days. Right. It was on the first day of Unleavened Bread that Yache came to them. Right. And he came, spoke to them, breathed on them, received the Holy Spirit, but Thomas wasn't there. And Thomas said what he said. Now, we're going to see that Yache came eight days after, which is Unleavened Bread is over. Because right. Unleavened Bread is only seven days. Right. Look at John. Now we're in verse 26 of that same John chapter... 20, please. And after eight days, again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Yahweh, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And that lets you know Yahweh has everything. Right. <laughs> Good to you. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Adonai and my Elohim. That's right. Yahweh said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is gracious to show these things. Is there anything else? That's it, man. We know this was kind of long. So I hope you all enjoyed this time. Yeah, I'm sure they enjoyed it. Yahweh is gracious. Ciao, ciao, brothers and sisters. Ciao, ciao.